All right, hello everyone. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to post a video um, of a screen cap of me talking and working through a basic morphology problem. So the homeworks that you guys have been doing right now for, uh, for morphology have mainly uh, just dealt with English, and you guys have been using the textbook pretty strongly as a nice um, uh, guide to begin learning. Um, for the midterm exam that you guys will take in this class, um, there will be some cross-linguistic uh, morphology problems to solve. Um, so to that end, I'm going to post this video to, uh, to give you guys some um, tips and some strategies so you guys can see how I work through these problems um, so that hopefully it should be um, a pretty easy problem for you as well. Okay, so the way the data sets work is they're all going to look uniformly just like this. So at the beginning, at the very top, we have the name of the language that we're going to be working on. Um, this one happens to be Isthmus Zapotec, um, then the date that I created the file. Um, then there'll be a brief introduction to the data set itself. So this one just says, consider the following data from Isthmus Zapotec, a language spoken in Mexico. Your task is to identify and understand the morphological structure present and answer all the corresponding questions. Um, and then the source where I got this data set from, which happens to be the language files. So the way you look at these glosses is they're all going to be set up in the same way. So right here where my cursor is moving over, I have what's the tra uh, called the transcription. And this is a um, phonetic or a phonological encoding of the word written in the IPA. So this one just says Palu, Cuba. Um, again, these two dots here, as you guys are learning, the IPA mean that this vowel is long. Tapa, Geta, uh, Bere, Do'o. Um, so on and so forth. And then you have what's called the gloss. So this is now where my cursor is sitting now. And then we have the translation of that word into English. So Palu in Isthmus Zapotec corresponds to stick in English. Okay, so when we start looking at the questions, we'll get an idea of what we're actually going to have to do with this data set. Um, and it's often a really uh, good idea to begin to look at what the questions are first before you begin to pour through a data set. Because as you can see, this is obviously quite a bit of uh, information. So you're asked to figure out which segment corresponds to the following information. So what is the marker in Isthmus Zapotec for possession, third person singular, and second person plural? Okay, so first, possession. So possession is going to do uh, be translated into English as something like uh, they own it, so his or your happens to be uh, our code here for possession in this language. So in this first column of data where we have the words uh, stick, dough, flour, tortilla, chicken, and rope, um, this won't be of interest to us, really, because these don't have any possession indicated in them, so they're probably a part of the data set that we can safely um, at least look back later. Um, this next two rows of data, though, all have the translation his or your in them. So this should be a, uh, a heads up to you that these are the two columns of data where you're probably going to find your answer um, that has to do with possession. So what we can do is let's start up a, a basic comparison. So the first one I'm gonna look at for um, identifying what might be possession for the word stick is I can look at the word palu, which just means stick. So this is just the basic form of the word. But to make the word his stick, so to say that some third person singular person is owning it, um, it looks like it's spalube. So we can see that there's been some differences added here. Okay, so we see, we can find the base here, palu stick in spalube right here, as I've highlighted it here, Palu. It looks like we have this new um, additional segmental information, this S and this BE. Now, we might be sort of uh, happy. We might go, oh, well, here's what the difference is then. Possession must just be the S and the BE here because this means his stick and that one means stick and the differences here were just the S and the BE. So then we can say possession is just the S and the BE. Um, well, this would actually be fallacious reasoning. So as we continue to look through the rest of the um, data in this whole line, so his stick, his dough, his flour, his tortilla, his chicken, and his rope, um, we'll actually notice that there's the S at the beginning of all of them, a B, the BE, that is, at the ending of all of them, and the root looks like it stays the exact same no matter what. So for Palu stick and his stick, Spalu, or, uh, spalu Bay, um, let's pick another word, uh, tortilla, so this one is Geta, so in this one it's skate be. Now, you notice here, uh, especially with the word tortilla, that there has been some sort of difference that's happened between the initial sound, um, where it was a G in tortilla, so geta, um, to keta, where the sound um, is now actually voiceless. Um, and we'll be studying more of these types of effects and processes um, in phonology um, and phonetics later. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about these sound changes that you see. Um, but you can trust me for the time being, um, and I will let you guys know, uh, these roots stay the same. There's just a small um, sound change that happens between this B to a P and this G to a K. Um, but for right now, don't get tripped up on it. So where we stand right now, we've identified all of our roots into these words. So we found stick and his stick, um, but we're still unsure as this point 
which um, of these morphemes, either the S that begins all of these words, or the BE that ends all these words, um, you know, which one corresponds to possession, which one corresponds to third person singular, again, because his is a third person singular word. So to figure out between uh, the S and the BE for which one must stand for possession, we're now going to need to look at the third data column. So in the third data column, we now have translations into the second person. So these are things like your stick instead of his stick. Okay, so it is in this column that we should now be able to find out um, what the difference is and which morphemes um, correspond to which pieces of information. Okay, so in the possession um, translation, again, we're looking for things like your or his. So in stick, we have palu, and then spalube is his stick, but your stick is spalulu. Okay, now the difference between columns two, the one with the his, and columns three um, with the your, um, is obviously now the difference of the ending seg segment. So in Spalu Bay, we have BE ending all of the words here, and that must then um, indicate the third person, because um, all these translations have his, and this ending segment Lu must indicate that the uh, segment is second person, and then the S at the beginning of both of these must be the one that stands for possession. So let me um, open up a text editor on here, and I will go ahead and type out um, the answers that I found, and I'll go ahead and recap um, how it is exactly that I came to these answers. So I found that possession, third person, which I'm going to just write a little shorter here, third person, and second person, the number here of plural and singular um, actually never uh, makes a, a, an important step in this problem um, because we don't have anything like third person singular versus third person plural um, or second person plural versus second person singular, um, hence why I'm just writing third person and second person um, in the key for this uh, data set. Okay, so we're now at possession. Okay, so what I ident identified was that in this data set, in Isthmus Zapotec, possession must be the prefix s third person needs to correspond or it must correspond with the um, suffix be and then finally second person must correspond to the suffix lu okay and now a quick recap of how I got to these okay so possession was the s so what I did is I looked in the very first column of data here so the ones I'm highlighting okay and I found the bases of these words so I found the base word for stick uh, the base word for dough flour tortilla chicken and rope then I used the remaining two columns, the ones that actually have the translations like his stick or your stick, um, to begin to uh, diagnose um, where the possession and where the person uh, morphology was sitting. So when I first started looking over at the third person column, these are the ones I'm highlighting now, like his stick, um, his dough, his flower, so on and so forth. I found that the difference between these columns and the base column was that in these ones, we had the S at the beginning and the BE both of which, um, at this point in the analysis, I couldn't decide um, which one was third person and which one meant possession. Because when I looked through the beginning um, segments of all of these words, there were S's all the way down and B's all the way at the end. I was able to tease these two apart by looking over at the third column. This is when things were translated no longer into the third person, but into the second person. And so here I can see that the second person is the Lou suffix instead of the B suffix. So B always appears when his shows up. So you can see all the B's here, all the his is here, and then all of the Lou's show up when your is the word. Okay, and then obviously this S persisted. So this S always shows up at the beginning of all of these words. And so then um, just by uh, process of elimination, I can tell them that the S is obviously the thing that is conditioning or letting speakers of Isthmus Zapotec know that the um, word has to do with possession. So the answer to number one then is possession is the S, third person is the B, and second person is the Lu. So now in the second problem it says to list the allomorphs for the following words, tortilla, chicken, and rope. So this harkens back to what I talked about um, a little bit earlier in the video when I mentioned uh, specifically the word tortilla. So remember tortilla is geta, G-E-T-A, um, and then when it uh, is said as your tortilla or his tortilla, we notice that the initial G here changed. So in this one, it was no longer um, a G, but a K, and it stays a K over here as well. Okay, so the allomorphs um, are just like our allophones, as we'll learn in phonology and phonetics. Um, and they basically just mean other forms or other shapes that you see. Okay, so what this problem is beginning to do um, is just to get you guys um, 
sort of comfortable with the idea that bases and words might change their pronunciation or their phonological shape depending on the presence of other sounds in the word. Um, but you're not required to give any sort of phonological analysis for this yet at all. So all you'll need to do for problem two then on this one is just find all of the various shapes of the word um, for tortilla, chicken, and rope. So for tortilla, the first form I see is geta. So that's just G-E-T-A. And then one of the other allomorphs I found was keta. That was K-E-T-A. Okay, so again, we may not be sure why the sound changed from a G to a K, but it looks like those are the only forms that tortilla takes. And remember that I don't put in um, the whole word like uh, skata bay because we already identified that the S is possession and the B is third person. So it would be um, incorrect to say that the allomorph is geta and skata bay. It's just geta and keta. Okay, with chicken, I'm sure at this point you guys are probably... Um, moving along pretty well, and this isn't um, too challenging, but let's look now at chicken. As you'll see, we see chicken here is bere, B-E-R-E, -E, and then it looks like another one of its allomorphs is pere, P-E-R-E, -E. Um, and it looks like that persists all the way through the data set, so P-E-R-E. -E. Again, remember, don't add any more of that morphology. You don't need to add it. Um, we already identified what those uh, morphemes meant. And then the very last one is rope. So that's the very last piece of our data set. Um, on the Mac text editor I'm using right now, I can't actually get the glottal stop in, this symbol. So I'm just going to put a question mark. Um, but I think they look reasonably similar, and you guys should be um, fine on a video for this. So the word for rope is do-o. So I'm using the question mark here to indicate the glottal stop. And it looks like um, its allomorphs are to-o. So we can see that the D became a T in this root. So this is do Again, question mark standing for the glottal stop. So do o and to o. And that would be all that you needed to do for this problem set. So uh, wrapping it up, we looked at all of the various forms of the data. We saw that possession was the initial s. Um, third person had to be the b suffix. Second person corresponded to the lu suffix. And then we had some various allomorphs for some words. So tortilla, we saw geta and keta, chicken, bere and pere and then rope uh, do-o and to-o. And so that is all that you need to do um, to get through one of these morphology problems. Now in longer ones, um, you'll obviously get a little bit more data than just these, um, but essentially the procedure is the same way. It works basically um, through a process of elimination. As you continue to go through the data set, you try and find commonalities and find patterns, um, and the consistent patterns um, will line up nicely in, um, you'll be able to uh, identify all of the morphological structure. You should also know, too, um, that all of these uh, morphology problems and phonology problems that you'll be doing in this class, um, for me and for the midterm, um, do have definite correct answers. So all of these are solvable. I've solved them all myself. And um, the last time I taught this class, we went through these problems before. Um, so all of these do have definite solutions. There are no trick questions or anything like that. Um, and there's just no, um, there's really no funny business. It's basically just, um, yeah, sitting down and, and working through and, and finding all the patterns. Um, if you guys have any other questions or you guys want me to do more um, videos like this, um, just leave a, leave a note in the comments when I post this on the discussion board. All right, thank you guys very much. Bye.